The question part numbering crops up quite commonly um, in a number of news groups that I've um, been watching. And um, for cat files, it's, it's generally um, one of two things. Some people believe that just having a totally unique incremental number um, is fine. Um, others prefer to um, build some sort of intelligence into that part number so that they can detect what it is without actually having to open the file um, or try and remember what they are. So those are the sort of two general um, sort of uses. So um, looking at the, um, the first option, which is um, building it from a number of different categories, um, the number may be different that you want to increment um, based on um, the main category. So if you're working with customers, um, you could have the customer um, name stroke abbreviation uh, used as the main category and then have a different numbering system based on each one of those. Um, we can also use the part number as the file name um, and um, you can store it in one of the um, file properties. So um, thinking through on that, if you use file name um, as the part number, um, that can sort of come into a bit of um, a problem. If you want to um, use that um, in a number of other different assemblies rather than having to redesign it, you will end up then having to um, have something that is not in the normal sequence and hard to then generate and understand where it's going, what, what it's used for. Um, so the solid edge part number um, Solid Edge has a part number generator which um, only allows for a single num numbering scheme, so that is rather limited. Um, and then storing part numbers that are based on categories means that there is a structure to the number um, that can mean something to someone at a glance. Um, but for those not so familiar, it's um, probably better to actually um, extend that and store the category definition or display name in a um, custom property so that um, other people can research it. If you do use something like the Solid Edge built-in data management um, and index all of your files, you would be able to search on those custom properties as well, um, just within File Explorer. So, you know, there are some good options there on how to work through that. So um, a solution that I have come up with um, is a macro that gives you some flexibility in how you define your part numbers. Um, it's going to use a configuration file to define the part number categories and the numbers that are being used for those major categories. Um, there will be up to six categories, so you've got a lot of scope there on, on building that up. Um, and each one will have a display name which will appear in a drop down box and an abbreviation that will appear in the part number. Um, the way I've set it up is that the primary category has a number sequence uh, which you can set to start anywhere. And um, as you create the part number, that will be incremented so that you're keeping each one unique. Um, and then for the categories, they can be linked to one another. So you could have um, the options on the first category. If you change that, it will change the options in the second one and possibly the third one as you go through and select. Or each of the categories can be totally unique from each other. So they'll be generated at the start and stay fixed. Or you could have a combination of both. So, um, as I said, up to six categories can be created. Um, nesting is allowed and um, individual categories can be an option as well. Um, categories can be used for defining properties for storing, but not necessarily used in the part number. So if you just want to have a um, something to search on, you can, but not form the 
um, definition of the part number. And then options in uh, using the categories will be stored in custom properties, as I said, for better storage. So um, this is a, um, an example of the macro. It's going to create um, the um, list of items, um, as you can see here. And um, if you only have three, for example, the other ones will get hidden and not used. You can see the options down the right hand side here, which show um, whether you want to include it in the document number. Um, we've got the option of having a separator in here um, so that you can separate the different categories so it's easier to read. And you have the option here of whether you want it stored in the solid edge document number or in a custom field, which you then define. Um, and you can also specify where um, you want the number portion of this to be stored. So uh, we put it after manufactured. So we've got A for Auckland, P for plastics, and then the number, and then we go in for molded H for HTPE, and then B for bought. So you can then sort of define it quite nicely. So if we look at that in action, I've set up a um, shortcut on my um, quick access toolbar. And as you can see, it brings this up. It's read the configuration file um, and it's filled out all of these boxes. So um, you can see that we've got various options in here. So as I go in and select the first one, um, it's automatically um, creating the document number as I go through and select my options. So in Auckland, we've got the option of plastics or cast. So we could go with casting. And um, we want uh, die cast in this, this option. And that could be all that you need um, to define your um, information. So we could have cast iron as a material. Um, I can change the position of this. We could have it um, after manufactured. And then we have two options in here. We can either do the fill properties, which will go away and fill out the names of the um, properties. If it doesn't have these um, defined in the file, um, it will create them as custom properties. And um, we can just sort of click on there. And then if it's a new file, we have the option that to save it and it will use the part number as the um, file name. So if we go save here, it's going to ask me where I want to store it. So we'll put this into um, this folder here and just save that out. And you'll see that it changes um, through there. So um, if we then go into here and have a look at what we've done. Um, we've got the um, document number created in here, and we've got the custom properties shown here as well. So if we have a look at how the configuration file works, um, you'll see that um, the options are sort of still shown in here. Um, so location is the first option. So it works similar to it does in Propseed. So you'll have a begin and an end. Um, so location is the first category. Um, this has the um, option that has the display name followed by the um, abbreviation. And then for the first category, we've got a incremental number. Um, and you'll see that it's incremented from 1000 to 1001. Um, so I've got this nested. So within, um, after the first option, um, Auckland has a second category called manufactured, which has plastics. And within plastics, that has a third nested option of type, which is molded and extruded. And then the second option um, for Manufactured is cast, and for this one we have um, die cast investment, sand, plaster, etc. Um, et and then you have your end 
um, for the second option. Um, then we have the second option within the first category, and that is broken down into sub options. And then finally down the end here, we have category four, which is a material which is totally separate from the other. So um, I could have nested this in here so that um, material for plastics could just be HDPE or it could be PVC or whatever. Um, and then the um, options for casting could be uh, mild steel, aluminium, whatever you want to use for your castings. Um, and then we've got two more individual um, categories. One's prefix and the other one is suffix. So um, looking at how that works um, for the location, if we change this, um, you'll see it goes to Wellington and it clears out the other two nested items. So you will see different options in here for Wellington as you would for, say, Christchurch. Again, that one just does sheet metal. And you've got folded or vacuum formed as your two options for sheet metal. Um, and then we change our uh, material. So um, this is how it works, and you just construct your um, seed file to match whatever categories you want to use within your um, file naming structure.